Jeff Rosser back with you. Today we're going to be looking at preparation steps for taking the uh, practical exam that we oftentimes see here at EBCC. Now this test is based uh, strictly off of the ACF CC exam. And CC stands for Certified Culinarian. So this would be an entry level test that you would take to uh, get your ACF certification. Uh, we're going to go through the steps on this uh, and show you uh, the knife skills involved, the chicken fabrication, and then the cooking uh, of, that, of the airline chicken breast, making a pan sauce, and then eventually the plating. Okay, so we're doing a chiffonade today, and we're starting off by stacking spinach. You can do any leafy vegetables. Um, right now, spinach is you, uh, what we have. So you start by putting them all together, then rolling them into a tobacco light tube, tightly knit. Then you grab it, so the bottom piece is uh, the roll part, and the top part, it's nice, uh, nice and tight. So what you do is you cut the top part, you discard it. Then, cut through the whole thing. Make sure you cut through. And you cut even little strips. Like so. So you use this garnish for soups, pastas, uh, salads, anything that's real fancy. It's real easy to use and very versatile. So today we're gonna do a concasse tomato. We start off by decoring the stem and then cutting a cross cut on top of it. You can use a paring knife or a tournée knife. I prefer to use a tournée knife only because it doesn't dig too much into the top part as the other knives. And the angle helps it real nice to support it without digging too much into the, into the tomato. Now that you have um, cut your tomatoes, now we want to wait till your uh, water is boiling. We add some salt to the boiling water. Then we get the tomato, throw it in there for about 30 seconds to about a minute. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. You put the rough plates around uh, 30 seconds to a minute. You're not really cooking the tomato. What you're doing is just heating up the skin. So make sure, even if, it, even if it's for about a minute, make sure that the skin starts to peel back. That's the whole point of doing this, is for the skin to start peeling. As you can see right here, how the tomato skin starting to peel, but we're not cooking the actual tomato. So now that you cook the tomatoes for about 30 seconds to a minute, you put them in an ice bath so they can shock, so the skin can actually separate from the membrane. As you can see right here, it's easier to peel and keeping the, the consistency of the, without breaking or overcooking. And it should come off very, very easy. If your tomato resists, you can always use a knife to help you So now that we've uh, concussed our tomato and we clean the skin off, now we're going to cut it in half to de-seed it. You notice all this comes out, leaving the pulp of the tomato. The next objective we're going to be going through is the minced parsley. 
Now, um, I, I've evaluated a lot of these practical exams, and what the common theme that I find with the mince parsley is that it just doesn't get done enough. So, uh, with the parsley, and we've, what we've got here is the curly leaf parsley. It doesn't matter if it's curly leaf or the Italian flat leaf parsley. What we're going to do is simply uh, pick off uh, the, out, the top portion of the parsley, so we just want the leaves. Remember, save the stems for your stock preparation, okay? Just pull off those leaves, save the stems, and then we're gonna, once we start the chopping, uh, we're gonna, we'll cut away again because it takes a few minutes, uh, so you have to be able to dedicate the time to it and know what to look for, uh, and we'll come back and take a look at that. So I picked the majority of the larger stems off the parsley. Um, I might have a few, uh, smaller ones on there and I can pick those out as I'm cutting it if I if anything catches my eye I can go in and pick it out. Uh, this is an example of the parsley you don't want to include in your mincing because it's kind of it's damaged and yellowing. So you don't, you only want that green vibrant parsley if it's damaged or looks yellow or wilted. Don't put it in. Always remember with your objectives garbage in garbage out. Right so we're going to start the mincing process and it's just a rocking knife cut. I've got my pinch grip on my blade uh, and just rolling, just rocking it back and forth. The heel of my hand is over the front third of my blade and just coming back and forth. And this is gonna reduce in volume significantly uh, over the course of this mince. We'll come back and we'll take a look at the finished product. Mincing this parsley for about 10 minutes and I've got it to the consistency that I like. Uh, you can see that it's stained everything green, including my fingers. So I'm going to use a, a plastic bowl scraper just to get it into my coffee filter. And the reason we use a coffee filter is the paper's a little bit stronger than paper towels. Once I get it in the coffee filter, I'm going to wrap the out, outer portion of that coffee filter bundle with paper towels. Uh, just to ensure that, that if the uh, coffee filter does tear, I don't start losing parsley on the rinse. So I'm just going to fold over in thirds and then kind of roll it gently into a little packet and it's already staining the coffee filter. You can see, so what we're, we're going to be doing with this rinse, so I'm just going to wrap it in paper towels, roll it up real nicely, fold it and take it over to the bench prep sink and rinse it under cold water. Back at the bench prep sink, and I've got my parsley bundle, and I'm gonna turn on the cold water. Don't use hot water for this, it'll, it'll blanch out your parsley. So just a, a, a thin stream, and we're gonna let it absorb into the paper, and we're just gonna gently squeeze and let it reabsorb, and gently squeeze. Just do this a few times. And if your parsley's mixed correctly, you'll see the water flowing green like you see here. And that's just excess chlorophyll getting, being rinsed off of the parsley. And that's a desirable trait just because you don't want everything to taste like grass. You want that bright green, vibrant color in your presentation. And you want the parsley flavor. Uh, you just don't want it to be too strong. So you want to do this until that green running water uh, run, starts running clear. And we'll do it about 10 or 12 times. And you'll see it start to clear up. So we've got our rinsed parsley bundle here. I'm gonna carefully open this up and discard all of the wet paper towels and get out my coffee filter bundle. And you can see how all of these paper towels are stained with that chlorophyll. And here is my coffee filter bundle right here. Uh, now I need to still need to dry this uh, better. So I'm gonna throw those paper towels away. I've got some clean, dry paper towels. Uh, and you notice the coffee filter started tearing there. It's not a big deal at this point. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in paper towels again, in dry paper towels, and fold it over. And what I like to do for this part is to get a saute pan, uh, you know, a medium-sized saute pan with a nice flat bottom and put it directly on top of that bundle and just press down kind of like you would with cracking peppercorns 
but really what this is gonna do is allow you to put all of your weight forward onto the pan to press out a lot of that water. I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing. Just, you really wanna get out as much of that excess water as possible so that you can fluff this product up nicely. Go ahead and unwrap this. We got a significant amount of water out of that. Here, we'll use our, our bowl here. I'm just gonna open this guy up very carefully. Try not to spill any of it. Now you spend a lot of time doing this objective, uh, so you don't wanna leave a bunch behind. So try to clean off that coffee filter without getting any paper into your parsley. Go ahead and discard this stuff. So the last thing that we need to do for presentation is fluff this up. So we've got a nice, fluffy, dry, rinsed parsley. And this should be the, about the texture of kosher salt. Oops, spilled it. Uh, so that is the parsley objective. Uh, ideally, you want it, you know, the texture of uh, sand, kosher salt, sugar, something like that. Go right in there. So uh, practice parsley at home. The more you practice, the quicker you get and the more efficient. What you're trying to do is measure out two inches of the carrots. Start by cutting off one side, you're squaring off. That way it's not moving around when you're cutting them. And you cut the other one. Make sure that your knife is perpendicular to the cutting board. So now that you cut your carrot into two inch lengths, now you wanna look at cutting a batonet, which is one fourth by one fourth by two inches, and a julienne is one eighth by one eighth by two inches. If you wanna start doing these, you wanna start off by doing precision cuts, and then after time, you will get a lot better. Helps for consistency also is cutting them and stacking them. As I'm doing here. So for a julienne, you start off the same way as cutting the batonet by squaring off all four sides. Now the difference between the julienne and the batonet, like we said earlier, was one fourth to one eighth. So it's pretty much half the size of the batonet. So, you want to take out the bad ones for the practical exam. So from the batonet, you get the small dice. The small dice is just cutting into cubes a fourth of the length. to know to make cooking applications. Here we 
we're gonna cut a mirepoix for your chicken stock. What you're gonna do is 50% onions, 25% carrots, and 25% celery. So for the testing purposes, you do want to use a clean carrot. You do want to peel it before you use it. For the chicken stock, since it's gonna be overnight, you don't want to cut it too small because it will dissolve in the water. The purposes of the exam, they have to be 3 fourths inch and large dice. To build a sachet, you need bay leaf, parsley stems, peppercorn, twine, and a coffee filter or a cheese cone. For your white chicken stock, you want to blanch the chicken bones first. You start with cold water and you bring it up to boil. So as soon as it comes to a boil, you want to bring it down to a simmer. What we are doing now is we are depoyaging the, the chicken. Depoyage means taking off all this film, as you can see. This is all scum and impurities that you want to get rid of your final product. Another way to help with this is to rinse out the chicken carcasses before you put it in the blanch water. A good way to help this process is to move the blanchy pot halfway on the burner so it can circulate to one side. So once the blanchy process is done and you, all the impurities have come out, you want to move just the bones into a stock pot and start your stock. So now that I have my chicken bones and my mirepoix in the stock pot, you want to add water and tie your sachet to one side of the stock pot. Now that everything is together for your stock, you want to bring it to a boil. Once it's in boil, you bring it down to a slow, slow simmer. So we're going to fabricate our chicken now. Uh, and if you want to see a more detailed video on the chicken fabrication to specifications, uh, on the card in the corner.
now we're going to show you the cooking of our airline chicken breast. So I've got my fabricated airline breast and it's nice and cleaned up, ready to go. Uh, one thing that I like to do when cooking this product is I like to dredge it in a little seasoned flour. You've seen me do this before on the Chef's Share video series, is I'm going to give the, uh, the protein itself with just a little salt and pepper before I dredge it. Uh, just to make sure that we get the seasoning on this product just a little bit. Uh, pat that in lightly. So I've got a nice start to that. I'm gonna come over here into my seasoned flour mix. This is a couple of tablespoons of flour with that same salt and pepper mixture. Uh, what the dredging is gonna do for this piece is it's gonna create a coating on the outside. So as it cooks, it's gonna lose less moisture. We're gonna get a better browning effect. And later on when we're making our integral or our pan sauce, uh, the, the way that that's going to work is going to act kind of as a roux or a thickening agent. So we need to do less reduction on it and we get more product out of it. Uh, it just kind of eases things a lot. And it helps, definitely helps prevent this chicken from drying out. So I'm just going to uh, lightly coat the entire outside of this thing and then shake off any excess. I've got my saute pan. Uh, warming up on the uh, stove over medium low heat, and I just I don't want to get it screaming hot because I don't want to I don't want to burn the outside of this, especially with the seasoned flour on the outside. So I'm heating up that saute pan. Remember when you select a pan for your cooking objectives, you don't want too large a pan or too small of a pan. So I, I got one of our small saute pans. This is a relatively small piece. So we, we want it to fit inside of that pan comfortably without having too much extra room. If there's a lot of extra room in the pan, it tends to scorch and overheat. Uh, remember, when doing this exam, also we need to do the entire cooking start to finish on the stove top. Uh, yes, it would be much easier to put this protein into the oven to finish it after we sear the outside. Uh, but the objective of the test is to see the uh, start to finish cooking technique stove top for this airline breast and get a nice product out of it. So we'll, we'll go over the stove next. All right, so our saute pan is, is heating up, like I said, medium low heat. Uh, we just want to get that nice and warm. Uh, we don't want that smoking hot. We haven't put any oil in there yet. I'm going to turn up my heat to medium. I'm going to get about a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons of vegetable oil in there. Move that around. Get my tongs, shake off any excess flour. I'm going to go skin side down first on this airline breast, and you should hear a nice sizzle when it hits the pan. There you go, just a nice light sizzle. And you see how this, this entire breast fits snugly in that pan. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, when, when putting the chicken in, you need to really watch your heat. Uh, don't be afraid to turn it up or down as you need. And I think mine's just a little high. So I'm just going to turn it down a touch. I don't want this searing too fast on the outside because what will happen is I'll get too much color on the outside and then it'll be raw on the inside. So we'll come back and we'll take a look at this when I turn it over. And then I'm going to show you how to finish this on the stove top properly. So our chicken breast has been cooking for about three to four minutes on the skin side down. We shouldn't develop a nice color, so it's starting to get that golden brown. We're going to go ahead and flip it to the, to the meat side and let that, let that sear continue. Um, what I like to do at this point is take another pan the same size and I'm going to create a stove top oven by just doming this breast. Um, when we come back and we take this top pan off, this thing should be almost ready. And then what I'm going to do is show you how to finish it because we're creating a steam vessel this way. And that beautiful crispy golden brown skin is going to get a little soggy. So I'm going to show you how to re-crisp that, get it ready for service, and then we're going to make our pan sauce. Let's go ahead and check our chicken now. We've got our dome on. And we've got some really nice color there. Uh, but you'll notice that 
because as you can scan, it's a little soggy. It's not as crispy as we like. Uh, we need to clean up the bone up here a little bit. It's got a little blood seeping out, which is fine. It's easy to clean up at that point. Let's take a look at the bottom. It's got a really nice sear on there. What I'm going to do at this point is turn this over and with my tongs, get these uncooked portions. Get a little browning on those, and then I'm going to re-crisp the skin side, and then we'll check the temperature on this. We'll, we'll set this aside, and we'll start making a pan sauce with all of that beautiful fawn in, in our pan. So doing this step is really important because around that airline bone, that, that wing bone that's coming out of the breast, uh, we often get some uh, undercooking happening there. So I just want to make sure that I can get some nice hard meat in there. Get those portions that haven't mixed the pan yet. Start working on those. And turn it back over here. And just get a little hard heat on there. Uh, about 30 seconds should be just fine. Then we're gonna put it, we're gonna turn it over and re-crisp that skin side. At this point, I'm going to turn up the heat just a touch to, to make sure we get that good hard sear and that crisping action back on the skin side again. I can use my tongs to press down, make sure we get good surface contact. You don't want to press so hard that you start cutting into the heat. Let that go for a minute, and I'll talk to you real quickly about the mise en place for our pan sauce. So, over here, we're going to start the process by sauteing, and then I've got half of a small shallot here, a quarter of a large one more of So about a tablespoon and a half of finely minced shallot. After that, I'm going to add in some mushrooms to saute, and then I'm going to deglaze that with white wine. Once that wine reduces down to almost dry, we want to get into that syrupy stage. I'm going to add some chicken stock, so about three, four ounces of chicken stock. We're going to reduce that for about, and we're going to finish with some heavy cream. Uh, with that existing starch in the pan, it's just thicken up that, that pan sauce nicely. We'll take a look at that in just a minute, but first we've, we've got to check our chicken breast. Very carefully. All right. So now we're resisting. I'm going to put it back on that skin side just for a second. I don't think it's quite ready now. We'll temp it, we'll set it aside, and then we will start our pan. Okay, so we're checking the temp on the chicken breast. And we are just about there. We're going to go ahead and set this aside. We're going to put it on our sizzle pan, and I've got a piece of aluminum foil. I just want to tip that with to keep it nice and warm. And I'm going to set this on the back of the stove uh, if it's nice and warm from the pilots over there, and that will that will keep it beautifully warm. So look at all that flavor we've got in our pan right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more oil so we can facilitate the saute. And that is about a half a teaspoon. Remember, shallots. Now the shallots, if they're cooked properly, they should pretty much melt into the sauce. And once that's done, uh, you shouldn't have a, a chunky sauce. Uh, we will have a chunky sauce for the mushrooms unless we decide to strain it out. Uh, we can get all of the flavor out of those and have a beautiful pan sauce uh, without having the mushrooms in there. I personally like leaving them in there just because of the fact that uh, the textural contrast uh, between that smooth, silky sauce and those kind of meaty mushrooms makes it a really nice sauce. So you see those, those shallots are just starting to get that, that translucent look. It happens very quickly if you mix them nice and small. I'm going to go ahead and add my mushrooms at this point. And remember, mushrooms are like sponges. They, they're going to try to soak up all of that uh, available oil, and that's fine. Uh, as long as your pan's hot enough, uh, they're going to start cooking properly. And it happens very quickly, especially in a small batch integral sauce like this. To so that, I'm going to add just a little salt and pepper. I'm going to 
add a little minced parsley. And I love that vibrant green that it brings and that kind of earthy chlorophyll flavor uh, that it adds to the sauce. Now you can put lemon zest, you can put uh, chopped thyme, rosemary. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you're putting in there, but you want to get your aromatics in there early in the, in the process. And then again, uh, at the end of the process, just check it for seasoning. And if you need a little more aromatics or seasoning at the end, uh, you can get that in there. But you always want to season as you go. All right? So this is cooking very nicely. Uh, notice the, the heat isn't so high that that fond in the bottom is, is burning. Right? So that's really important. We don't want this to have a scorched flavor. We want this to be... Uh, nice and mellow. So those mushrooms are reducing in their size and they're giving, they're starting to give up their water. So at, at this point, uh, I'm going to let it go for just a minute and we'll, we'll come back and take a look at this rabbit. All right, so our mushrooms have reduced down significantly and they've given up their water. They've done a little bit of the deglazing work for us. And we have a really nice base or foundation for this pan sauce. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add about an ounce of wine. And it is critical that you cook this all of the alcohol out of this wine. Now the wine uh, adds a fruity uh, flavor profile. Uh, it brightens it up, makes it nice and vibrant. Uh, but if you don't cook it down properly, what you're going to have is that uh, alcohol forward flavor profile, which is very unpleasant when it comes to a dish like this. We want it to be nice and savory and mellow. Um, we don't want it to taste like wine. We just want the benefits of the wine. So, so it's deglazing that pan nicely. All of that fawn that was stuck to the bottom of the pan is coming off. I love using a rubber spatula just to, just to help it along. Uh, and it will all come off by the end of this process. So that wine cooked off very quickly, but I still want it a little drier. I want to take it to the offset stage, which is that syrupy consistency that the that liquids get in the reduction process. Okay, so our wine has reduced down to that nice syrupy stage, and most importantly, uh, the pan is completely deglazed. So at this point, I'm gonna add about three, four ounces of chicken stock, and we're gonna reduce that down by at least half. That's really important because we're concentrating these flavors in this pan. It's super important to let the reduction happen properly. So I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. Um, use my rubber spatula to scrape the sides of the pan and get everything into the sauce. If we leave stuff up on the sides of the pan, we're just leaving flavor behind. So get everything in there and bring that to a nice hard boil and reduce that chicken stock down by at least half. Then we're going to add our green to finish the sauce. So our chicken stock has reduced down just about by half. I turned up the heat to facilitate that. Uh, want to check the consistency of this. Um, remember, we, we started out with about three, four ounces of chicken stock. Uh, that, it might need just a little bit more reduction, but it's going nice and hard. So at this point, I'm going to add about two ounces of heavy cream, and we're going to reduce this down by at least half. Now remember, the starches in here from the flour coating of that chicken breast are going to assist in thickening this up. Uh, and creating the, a, a bit smoother consistency on that sauce and the seasoning that's in there as well. A couple ounces of cream. And again, just reduce by half. And then we're gonna check the seasoning and we'll take a look at this uh, on our hairline chicken breast. Okay, so our pan sauce has reduced down really nicely. We're almost at the consistency we want. Remember, we're taking this to the nappe consistency, which means that it's going to coat the back of your spoon nicely without running off. That's just about there. It's still a little bit thin, so I'm going to let this uh, reduce down just for a few more seconds. I can turn up the heat or down, uh, depending on what I need. Uh, I like, as the sauce gets closer and closer to finishing, what I like to do is just adjust the heat down a little bit because 
uh, a moment of inattention and your socks is broken and ruined and you have to start all over. All right, so while that's working, we're gonna uncover our airline rest and we're gonna go ahead and put this, this on plate for presentation. Now to present this airline rest, you can present it whole if it's if it's fairly small. If it's a little bit larger, what I like to do is a couple of scalloping cuts just to make it easier for your guests to eat this. And it also makes a really nice presentation. But we're just gonna take a look at this whole with our integral or pan sauce. So we've got that plate enough. Let's check the consistency of the sauce at this point. All right, so I think we're there with the with the consistency. Uh, you really need to be careful when reducing heavy cream uh, because at some point you're gonna reduce out uh, so much water that the oil will start breaking out of the emulsion. Uh, so basically what we're doing when, during the reduction process is boiling off excess water and that fat concentrates. So we're bringing up the fat percentage in the sauce. Uh, and we know how fats react to heat, especially if it's in an emulsion, it's gonna wanna break down. So let's go ahead and remove this from the heat and just take a look at the consistency of our sauce. It's fine, it's just for a single chicken breast. Remember these pan or integral sauces are super easy to make, uh, a great addition to any restaurant menu. So let's go ahead and look at the saucing of this product. And, uh, we could strain this like I told you guys earlier, but I really like the consistency and chunk of, chunkiness of this. We only want to sauce about a third, so I'm gonna come down and do a long edge of this sauce on the lower third of this airline breast, okay? Just kind of let it spill onto the plate. Now, uh, for the purposes of the test, you would need to have your starch and your two vegetables and the, the sauce obviously crisp the airline chicken breast. So that would be a nice presentation. And, you know, like I said, if it was a little larger, I would probably scallop cut that. Uh, but that is your airline chicken breast with an integral or pan sauce. Hi, Chef Ross here. If you like this video, uh, I encourage you to subscribe, leave a comment, and definitely click on the notification so you don't miss videos in the future. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.